welcome you to the next session of embedded software testing uh, in the previous session uh, we had seen uh, some of the uh, that had uh, uh, levels of testing uh, in terms of uh, how different models are organized uh, taking an example of about 12 modules uh, how unit testing level it is getting organized integration testing system testing so we have detailed about uh, each com modules or components how it is disintegrated or integrated at a higher level then uh, we discussed about the uh, setup Uh, host and target how it looks like what will be the host based development and testing what will be the target based development and testing so what is the likely environment so what is the system that is going to be used and the uh, system with a realistic input provided from the system perspective then we have uh, seen through some of the target based debugging techniques uh, with the help of simulation emulation target monitoring simulators emulators simulator is about the yes the emulation uh, what are the emulation techniques that are used then we have the target monitoring where uh, the monitoring program will uh, look into the target events and the data is going to track with the target so the tools and their usage also was discussed how it should be used i think today we will uh, go through some of the commercial tools uh, as a, an example uh, we'll come to know so these are uh, tools basic tools which we had uh, listed out uh, in the earlier class of course so we went through some of the embed systems or embed system words Uh, we need to be aware of these words so the next session we will uh, take up so in this session uh, uh i will uh, provide you few questions of course which you can take a note but with a uh, few questions on uh, what we had uh, studied in the previous uh, class the classics uh, the first one is about uh, why simulators can be used for the complete testing what is the major difference between simulator and emulator so we just need to tell uh, why it cannot be used uh, for the complete testing uh, what is the major difference between uh, simulator and emulator why do we need uh, Uh, I hope you are sure. Uh, we all know about a ESP setup, a system testing setup, and uh, configuration also we know. Why should we configure? Okay. Then uh, the last one being uh, provide a brief sentence for the demo. Test armor, test bench, fault injection, I/O, ICD, breakpoint, simulator, emulator, IS, profile. So these are some of the access questions for the previous lecture. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. The first slide of this lecture. We'll discuss about the PM method. We have seen several approaches, generic way of how how to uh, uh, create uh, test cases, test design, and uh, the test approaches. Uh, in a generic way, I give you an example. We have seen uh, different examples and all that. Uh, there is uh, one uh, unique uh, way of uh, uh, definition uh, that uh, they have uh, used. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, defined by uh, Bart Brookman and uh, Edwin uh, Norton Book. There is a book called Testing Embedded Software uh, by Bart Brookman and Edwin Norton Book. You can download or you can Google it. Uh, it's a good book about a TM method. Basically, one chapter he has uh, uh, 
discussed in detail about that TM method. This is the other method of embedded testing. So I had highlighted some of the points from that book. Uh, we will walk through that, and uh, uh, in detail uh, you can go through that book, and uh, we can see the differences of the general and the TM method. Okay. Uh, testing approach differs per embedded system. We know that different different embedded systems will have different approaches. It could be a computer electronics, or it could be a home environment, or it could be an automotive, or a telecom, or aerospace, or space, whatever. There are different uh, varieties of embedded systems uh, that are being used. Uh, of course, there are different test approaches and methods that is also followed. There is no unique test approach that is available. Uh, I would say if you take up two embedded systems testing over a period, the approach will be definitely different. The approach in the sense, uh, the basic uh, criteria or uh, the uniqueness uh, between two uh, embedded systems are not considered. So they, I would say there is no unique uh, test approach that is being addressed for doing this. Uh, example testing a mobile. The first uh, to testing a the control system. Uh, you know, uh, mobile is a small uh, device having uh, one or two major processors or a couple of interface devices, and uh, brake control unit system uh, is uh, one of the major components that is having uh, complex algorithms, etc. Complex interfaces will be used uh, in a car, uh, let's say. So definitely the testing approaches will be different uh, in these two. So we cannot apply uh, something say some method I have defined for uh, testing a mobile, and the same method I will use it for the control unit. I don't have a unique uh, approach. But uh, when you take uh, when you uh, go through the approach uh, that we have used, you know, narrow down some of the finer elements of this approach. Definitely, there are similarities. Uh, similarities in the sense that when we are testing it, we will result in either issues or we will revert back in terms of test case or designs, uh, in terms of uh, fixing the failures or retesting it, whatever it is. So, there are nothing but uh, issues and uh, the solutions for those issues in the embedded testing methods. So, these Similarities are cleanly organized as a structural disk. That is nothing but TM method. The TM method is nothing but a organized way of embedded system testing having identified the similarities of different embedded systems. So, these are some of the definitions that are used. Uh, definition TM is a method that helps to assemble a suitable test approach for a particular system. That means uh, we will define uh, uh, some of the uh, structured approach from there, we will draw uh, or assemble some test approach which will be suitable for a particular system. It provides a mechanism for assembling suitable. Uh, sorry, suitably dedicated test approach from the generic elements applicable to any test project. And a set of specific measures given to the observed system characteristics of the embedded system. So, what it means is uh, it provides a mechanism for assessing suitability. That means we have a generalized or structured approach. So, we will pick up a suitable uh, uh, dedicated test approach from the generic elements, which could be applicable as I said for mobile device or car device, whatever it is. So it could be any project within the embedded system for a series of devices, and followed by that we use specific measures relevant to the observed system. So, so what we do is basically we identify some of the similarities, or it is called a characteristics. For these observed characteristics, there are specific measures so that will be used in the embedded system. So these two are very important. One is uh, uh, 
the characteristics of the system then specific measures that are required for the particular system so this is very important uh, while uh, taking the tm method so this is uh, what the definition of tm method this is uh, clearly defined about the tm method uh, approach document in the uh, book by uh, bart brookman and uh, edwin norton bow okay okay so let's uh, go into the tm method overview so what is the structured uh, and the testing uh, method so structured testing comprising of uh, uh, the four uh, elements that is life cycle infrastructure techniques organizations this is structured that means life cycle infrastructure techniques and organization is called also called as a short form of it so these four elements are uh, uh, structured Inside the PM method, you can see a diagram uh, which uh, explains the overview of the uh, Lito. That means uh, the Lito indicated the approach is also very complex elements and specific measures, as I said in the previous slide. So all these uh, are related to the cornerstones of the structure testing. That means the structure testing uh, of the PM method is basically based on these things. So. what we do is we will uh, define the etm generic we will uh, use the specific measures of the particular system then we will apply using a mechanism called lito that is life cycle infrastructure techniques and organization that will result in a method called dedicated test approach so this is what is the overview of tm method we will uh, take up uh, each of these uh, lipo life cycle infrastructure techniques and organization so what is life cycle uh, this defines uh, the which activities have to be performed and in what order it gives testers and managers the desired control over the process uh, we will uh, have a separate session uh, on the life cycle in the next or uh, the forthcoming classes that will detail about a life cycle that different uh, testing life cycle uh, models are uh, definitely uh, but uh, in a shorter form the life cycle uh, defines uh, which activities have to be performed at what is the process what order it has to go uh, there is a uh, thing called uh, entry and exit method so that will define all the objective outputs outputs and the process items so basically the life cycle gives a uh, desired control for uh, managers as well as the testing team on the overall process of the entire testing next is the uh, technique this helps with how to do things by defining standardized way to perform certain activities that means uh, uh, techniques will identify how to do uh, the testing by defining uh, some of the standardized for testing activities once we have this two then we will have the infrastructure that is uh, for the above techniques what is the needed environment so what is the infrastructure that is needed so this defines so what is needed in the test environment to make it possible to perform the planned activities that means we have defined the plan here we have defined the technique and what it needs to use this technique so that is what infrastructure uh, element defines of the tm method once these three items are there then we are going to have another one called organization this basically defines the roles and required expertise of those who must perform the planned activities the way they interact with the other participants that means uh, the organization defines the various various uh, roles and uh, responsibilities of Uh, required people for conducting the uh, test. So that will basically uh, identify a different people or expertise or who is required. So uh, in the above three things, we have uh, defined the plan, we have defined the techniques, 
and uh, we know what infrastructure is required. Once we, these three are laid out, uh, we need a, who has to do all this? Who should do what actually? Who should lead the test team? Who should do which functionality test? Who should do what? So all these things will be covered under organization. So this is very important basic things uh, about uh, the method, life cycle, techniques, infrastructure, organization. It's called it all. Once again, I will go through the previous slide. Why? Because to make it clear that Lito is a an outcome of the TM method, which will be applied for the test, the embedded test under uh, subject. So for Lito, uh, basically we will have specific measures for the particular identified embedded system. And uh, there are generic approaches or methods we are going to do. So, combining together, so we will come up with a mechanism for uh, these two basic elements. And that mechanism will work out LITO, but nothing but life cycle, techniques, infrastructure, and organization. So, these uh, four are how organized is what is being detected in this figure. Figure 2.2 is nothing but uh, actually this is a uh, reference to the book which I was telling uh, just now, uh, testing uh, embedded uh, software by Bart Brockman. I think I have put the reference uh, for you, so probably you can make a note of this. So, these four core four cornerstones are the important items of the TM method. Life cycle, techniques, infrastructure, organization. Life cycle is the outcome of the whole organization. Infrastructure is supporting it. Techniques is the next thing. Then we have the Organization surrounding this life cycle, this will be organized. So, let us go in uh, further step uh, having a little details uh, about life cycle. In the life cycle model, the principal test activities are divided into five phases. What are those five phases? We will uh, tell in the next slide. The figure. Uh, so basically, the life cycle model is given to five phases. In addition to the phases of planning and control, preparation, specification, and execution, a completion phase has been defined to round off the test process satisfactorily and to formally deliver the test uh, for the organization. So, what it tells is uh, it will basically provide uh, the different phases, and in addition to that, it will also help uh, in the planning and control, preparation, specification, and execution. This is a complete uh, uh, phase uh, having a different uh, elements. So, basically, the outcome of uh, this life cycle is uh, to identify or measure the outputs uh, that are uh, come as a satisfactory uh, result of the testing. So, what are the five phases that are defined under life cycle? Uh, Preparation, specification, execution, completion. Uh, these four all under one box called the PNC. That is the thing about planning and control. So there is a preparation uh, phase where uh, this are uh, prepared or the test planning is done. Uh, then once the test planning uh, is done, we are going to define a specification. Is nothing but test specification, not the required specification uh, that will identify all the test case, uh, test uh, scenarios, and all that. Then, so once we have defined all the test cases, procedures, and the execution mechanism, we will do the execution with the help of the third phase. Then, the last one is the completion, that means this is nothing but uh, reporting the result, uh, uh, capturing, uh, logging, and all that mechanism will be part of the. 
completion. Uh, this also can uh, uh, have uh, disability in terms of coverage, etc. So altogether, uh, this will be done with the help of the organization uh, under the uh, one phase, which will be throughout this four phases. It is called planning and control. So five phases of the uh, law basically divided into preparation, specification, execution, completion, all being comprised under the planning and control. And uh, anything did I miss? Okay, fine. Okay, let's uh, go into the next one. Uh, that is nothing but techniques. So, what do we do in the techniques? As we said, uh, all the testing methods, testing mechanisms, all have to be defined under techniques. So, this cornerstone of supports the test process by offering testers elaborate, proven, and universal working methods as well as enabling the management that is, auditors are supporting a team to track the progress of test process and evaluate the results. That means this techniques element will have test process in terms of testers elaborating a proven method or universal working method for testing the complete API system. So this will also help how it can be helping the management or the quality team to track the progress of the testing process and evaluating the outcome of the test. In principle one or more techniques can be devised for every type of activity. See, the testing is basically divided into different activities: manual, automated, and white box, black box, etc. So, all this can have a different devised techniques. These techniques are developed in the world almost every day. Whenever an activity exists, which is likely to be repeated for a the future test process would be supported by devising specific techniques for that activity only. It means we have several techniques and all that. So we are going to have all under this techniques method which will be used for tracking and monitoring the testing process. So this is all a part of the techniques. So this can have any activity that is a part of the test process in terms of defining uh, uh, testing etc test cases procedures all that will be part of the techniques and uh, of course uh, we can uh, define uh, techniques uh, to have uh, Safety analysis. In addition, I am telling about uh, like uh, basically this will help uh, the complete picture of the testing, uh, test design, test automation. This could be from a test uh, data. It could have a process and checklist, etc. So all this can be part of the Technique. So that is about the second one. So we have a first cornerstone is life cycle, second one as techniques, third one is infrastructure. So so far we have defined the life cycle, we have defined the techniques, and now it is the infrastructure that is required for implementing the. Technique, techniques. Sorry, 
The infrastructure for testing includes all the facilities required for structure, that is structure testing is nothing but the organized method of ordering, that is nothing but TM method. It can be divided into facilities needed for executing the test, it means the test environment or test method or test method. that facilitates, uh, sorry that the facilities that support efficient test execution tools, support tools, any automation, any batch execution. All this will be part of the test environment or infrastructure. Uh, it can also include uh, the facilities for uh, housing the staff. That means uh, the staff, the testing staff, uh, would need uh, some infrastructure, right, of uh, for taking uh, their needs or their disk or any internet or any support tools or anything that is needed for the embedded testing to be carried out efficiently. So that is what is the take uh, infrastructure uh, items that are required. And uh, that can have a hardware software, it can have a test database, any equipment that is needed. Some broad categories that book talks about that maybe we can touch base this method separately in a different class detailing out each of the elements under the infrastructure. Uh, office environment for the support staff can also be part of this infrastructure. Okay, coming to next is the organization. So now we have defined the life cycle techniques infrastructure having said that all these are in place documented or available. Now who should do this? How it is organized with different roles and responsibilities for various people. These are all about this is what is told here, all about people and how they communicate. It is not just enough to have a people assigned. Uh, there should be a mechanism how people interact and uh, in terms of uh, helping each other or reporting or uh, strategizing, etc. It's like a teamwork. And uh, mostly the embedded testing will be done by an independent team in uh, any of the organization to take up automotive or aerospace space because the independence is very much needed in the industry. To basically get unbiased as a developer. Okay, so testing is not a straightforward task that can be performed in isolation, unhindered by interferences from a demanding outside world. The involvement of many different disciplines, conflicting interests, unpredictability, shortage of expertise, and time constraints may be set up and management of it is a difficult task. So basically, this Tells about uh, uh, what are the various uh, uh, integrity details that are involved for uh, having an organization, having uh, various sets of people. What are the challenges that people will have? Whether the people or other team uh, that is going to do the team testing uh, is having a sufficient expertise or uh, any uh, interest, uh, lack of interest is there or. Well, a certain guy is having expertise or interest in a certain area, uh, he should be allocated uh, uh, accordingly. And uh, so, what is the efficiency? Uh, what is the time constraint that uh, he can have? He may have some new plans and all that. So, all this will be considered for making this organization complete. So, that is about a little the life cycle, infrastructure, techniques. And organization. So, some of the points is uh, mechanism for assembling the dedicated test support that we know. Basically, so far it explained the principle of the what it is that makes the system special. It means we will define the, some of the characteristics. We know that we will first identify the characteristics, then, for testing those characteristics, we need to have. Uh, test approach that is nothing but dedicated test approach. 
it is important to note that the PM method uh, does not aim at achieving a scientifically accurate and complete taxonomy of embedded systems. Rather, its purpose is entirely practical and purely from test perspective. As I said, the test approach and uh, the methods that are being used have to be purely from a realistic or uh, practical nature. So we just can, cannot design some test case and say that all these uh, have to be tested and the results will come. So we need to uh, visualize uh, from uh, practical sense. That's very important. Uh, I will just uh, underline a uh, few things that are very important uh, uh, for uh, doing the and very interesting. Characteristics. So basically, we need to have a thorough understanding of the system. That means a bigger picture has to be there for the system which is under test. Once we identify that. Uh, Characteristics of that system, then it's easier for making us writing the test approach. And other thing is, it should be very much practical. Whatever we write, test case or test procedure or steps, had to be realistic and practical. Uh, we cannot uh, have something which cannot be tested or which cannot be cut. Some sort of values, suppose uh, sensor is supposed to take uh, something like uh, 20 degree to one eighty degree of input, uh, and uh, it is uh, limited with that input. We cannot afford to uh, provide some minus uh, hundred degree or uh, uh, three hundred degree centigrade. So we should see all this uh, uh, practicality of that particular sensor in order to make it a realistic uh, test approach, and uh, uh, it should be purely. Are defined and uh, have the ownership of the tester. So it's from the tester's perspective because he is going to test it. So that is why it is very important to have these things in place for uh, PM method. So it will also help in assisting the test manager in answering the question like what makes the system special and what must be included in the test approach to tackle this. So the system uh, he has an understanding he will know uh, what is making this system and uh, what should be included to make this system testable that is test approach. So these are some of the few or key items that needs to be understood or used before uh, devising the PM method uh, using the Lito principle. Okay, so uh, we said that uh, there are a few characteristics or the complete characteristics of the embedded system under test had to be used. Once we have that characteristic, we are going to have measures. Uh, measures is nothing but the test approach of how we are going to do for that characteristic. Some of the characteristics that are usually used in uh, any of the embedded systems. Or as below, all these have to be considered for doing the embedded system testing. Safety critical systems, technical scientific algorithms, autonomous systems, unique system, one shot development, analog input and output, or mixing signal, hardware restrictions, state based behavior, hard real time behavior, control systems, extreme environmental conditions. So these are some of the definitions you have come across for embedded systems course. Or this, uh, the taxonomy of the embedded systems, like we know safety critical systems like uh, aerospace or automotive, so which have to be safe because it's very important that uh, the systems uh, cannot uh, go for the faulty, which will result in safety hazard. And then uh, there are uh, certain uh, systems having a technical uh, or a scientific uh, uh, complex algorithms. Uh, those related tests also we have to uh, devise a testing methods. So the other characteristics is autonomous systems, 
which will be having its own intellectual property or define the methods of implementation. One shot development or rapid development kind of system which will be used in a short cycle. Then we have systems with unlocks purely with unlock inputs, unlock outputs. Of course, discrete is not listed here because most of the or almost all the effects come from all these codes. So it doesn't mean that unlocks will be there often. That will be this is one of the characteristics that we used. And any hardware limitations or restrictions that are to be considered. And state based behavior like different states the system can enter or exit. And any hard real time behavior like when the you know higher what is hard real time system the systems something like medical devices such as machines which are scanning a human have to have a hard real time behavior because it cannot afford to miss the deadline otherwise it will result in any of the damages to the human. And of course, we have control systems such as closed loop control systems or open loop, whatever it is, motor driving systems, etc. And there are systems like military applications; they use environmental conditions. They also have to be considered. So these are some of the characteristics that are used in PMO method. So these are very Important things that needs to be considered for uh, uh, developing the approach. Uh, example for uh, one shot development, uh, I would say uh, the systems of which you cannot come back or which cannot be repaired, also called as one shot development. So and satellites which are launched only once and cannot be maintained, we cannot maintain it, very difficult but uh, nowadays uh, there are uh, shuttles and all that which will help or support in terms of operating software and all but in generally these kind of systems uh, once it is released uh, cannot be uh, used for maintenance. Uh, that is about a TM method. So we know that uh, TM method has uh, four uh, cornerstones, and uh, with the help of uh, these four cornerstones, life cycle techniques, infrastructure, and all this, we will devise the TM method. And uh, before we develop the techniques, we use Specific measures for a certain amount of cash kicks, such as the below ones. Of course, there are other things which are discussed in the book. Maybe I'll touch base in between when that is possible. They say there's a little metric, they use it. Uh, I think we can touch base uh, in the one of the sessions. So there is a question for TM method. We can make a note. How TM method is different than normal embedded system testing? So we have gone through normal embedded system testing in the earlier sessions in terms of our test case procedures and all that. How this is unique or different than the general embedded system testing? So that is about our TM uh, method. We have gone through the various embed system approach, environment methods, all that in general. So I would like to categorize for embed system testing some of the tools 
uh, how they are being used or how they are organized basically for embed systems. So these are some of the master tools that uh, has to be there. Of course, the same tools can also be used for uh, development also. So the categories are uh, something like this: test equipment. Uh, test equipment uh, will have uh, oscilloscope, logic analyzers, or DMO, digital multimeter, etc. We have a uh, different merge tools being uh, explicitly used for test cases or test procedures. Uh, there are various versions uh, that test development team I need to uh, need to do it while doing the changes and all that, uh, like wind merge or uh, uh, beyond compare. These are some of the tools. I am just writing the examples, digital multimeter, etc. Diff merge tool, something like in merge, beyond compare. Then we have our static analysis metric tools, uh, such as. Understand uh, for C plus plus C. Then we have a uh, test link, uh, defect management uh, tool, something like Bugzilla, etc. JIT, so many are there. Next, we have a uh, text editor tools, uh, something like Notepad, plus plus, Textpad. Uh, you can use it uh, for evaluating the test results and all that. So not only it is used for development, it also can be used. Code checker, something like QWERTY, they use checking the code. Uh, here, code checking is not that C or ADA or whatever the language checking. It is uh, something like alignment and as per the coding. Uh, Guidelines, it is there or not. So this will cover basically. Of course, we have a, a rules, coding rules, something called this. So, see, I think 2004 and of late 2011 also will come. I'm not sure about that, but uh, these are some of the stringent guidelines that they follow. Uh, for validating that, uh, we use uh, some of the code checker tools. From Telelogic and all of them. So we know that IDE, like IAR, workbenches, and Eclipse. Then we have Lotterback, Multi, uh, what is that? Multi, Lotterback, IAR, Workbench, etc. Of course, we have Quad Compose Studio for TI, also used. Hex editor, some of the binary or images or raw files and all that you want to view it, you need a hex editor or hex viewer tools are there. So, there are tools. And for reverse engineering, we can use static tools such as understand, which will have the call tree mechanism. It will be used for reviewing and all that. So it will be very useful to have reverse engineering tools for some of the testing. So the more the system, the more complex it is, better to have a control on the System through some of these calculation identifications or uh, how the code is structured or how the models in the system is structured. So it's, this will help basically. This assembly tools uh, uh, usually are built around the ID. 
which will uh, disassemble the, the object code basically. Then we have a dynamic canvases to uh, runtime uh, profiler and uh, profilers part of the stack trace it is a time machine from all out of that uh, sorry multi. So like this there are various tools. So this is it but basically these are some of the categories that are commercially used for a of software testing. Other than this there could be some manual tools also which will be developed in house that is uh, need basis. There are other tools like uh, static analysis and that are LDI test bed uh, coverty then uh, for complexity measurement uh, use is one of the important thing that uh, uh, needs to be done in embedded system. We cannot have a, a certain uh, amount of complexity going up for the embedded systems. It has to be limited within that. It's called a Mackey complexity. Uh, they use uh, understand C C C. C plus plus is one of the good tool they use it to analyze the complexity of the uh, code. Then dynamic analysis tool uh, uh, we said that and time profilers and machines are all used. So these are some of the commercial uh, tools category. Okay. Uh, I had put an Excel sheet covering some of the embedded system tools that is used in the industry as an example. So don't take it as a, it is used certainly in a certain a project or product. So I just generalized. So as an example, so we can just have a look at how it is. I hope you are able to see and it is shared. Okay. So this list basically lists out the tools and automations and what are the tools that is being used in different phases. I have covered for all the phases of the embedded system. Uh, development phase, configuration phase, verification phase, reviews, usability and project tracking or the management. So these are some of the phases and uh, each phase will have a different uh, activities like development phase we have requirement management, code development, uh, requirement support, uh, in the configuration we have configuration all the configurable items and deliverable artifacts and uh, verification of course uh, our topic is that these cases we develop. And uh, if it is a model, then model based coverage we use. Model based testing we do. Testing in coverage we take care. Debugging uh, is also used as one of the testing techniques. Uh, reviews will be using it. Analysis, static, static analysis, etc. And uh, we have for reviews code review and uh, any checklists that we use for. Reviews that also is one of the activity. Then we have a traceability, traceability for test cases, test scenarios, test procedures, test results, both upstream and downstream. I will tell you what is upstream and downstream in one of the class. And uh, traceability is very important part. It is not just uh, tracing the test cases, TC2 requirement also needs to be done so that we have a coverage of the testing for all the required requirements. The SVP is nothing but the plan or this plan I would say software plan and for project management and tracking we use this and defect management artifacts okay now coming to tools what are the tools used for development phase for requirement management we use doors. It's from IBM. Then we have a rectify. 
and then uh, for core development we use the mpc series target or evaluation board uh, mpc is nothing but uh, the power pc series from free scale uh, we use for development or debugging the id integrated development or such as adjustment this is just an example it could be different for different ml systems and for requirement support uh, we use uh, capturing all the requirements making it uh, uh, tabulated and all that we use microsoft office word excel or visual and uh, for design and all that of course we use visual or any of the design tools so its version also is listed next to this for configuration this is very really, very important uh, aspect of the embed systems the items uh, which are under test which are under development have to be configured they should be controlled so that will be done uh, with the help of uh, seven dimensions uh, or svn supposition uh, test cases uh, we know we use uh, microsoft word with the templates we have discussed in excel sheet for having the test cases identified Uh, for model based coverage we use the mpc as some of the model based testing uh, after we cover the model uh, uh, test cases we use uh, scaled qte qualified uh, test environment uh, for testing and coverage rti is used it is from rational this is one of the good tool they use it of course there are other tools like uh, LDRA, Vectorcast, etc. Uh, for debugging, uh, as I said, the power verification is being used for debugging matrix also. The same ID is being used. What is being used for development cycle? Uh, of course, we have reviews using uh, various uh, review cycle uh, process with the help of uh, Excel sheet or Word analysis. can also be done with help of microsoft office stack analysis uh, this is uh, one of the important thing uh, that any ml systems uh, have to be tested stack that is nothing but uh, uh, the memory aspect of the system that is running how much stack it is using what is the maximum it can reach and whether it is clearing it or deleting the stack etc Freeing the stack, etc. Of course, for reviews, as a separate phase, we have a C reviews, C and C plus plus code review, QAC, source monitor, coverty, core collaborator, Telegraph logic, logic uh, scope, Mr. Rule checker. For other language, we use PC. Telegraph logic uh, also is there for other language reviews. Uh, Traceability is one of the important aspect, as I said. we can uh, either automate uh, using scripts uh, for the test cases whatever you have developed to cover it and uh, as you have put up that script uh, you can uh, have the word or excel sheet report so that's what i have mentioned you can automate with help of python or parl to extract the data and populate the traceability sheet so basically all the test cases uh, and procedures they will have a unique id those unique id are used to develop the traceability and how they are done is with the help of automated tool uh, such as python or perl scripts that are being used to develop it for test defects and uh, management we use uh, this link and bugzilla uh, maybe we will uh, have a separate session on how it looks like and how it is getting used and also there are possibilities that uh, svn and uh, git also can be used for test defects and test uh, management okay so these are some of the tools that are used for a typical ml system so this is uh, very specific so you don't have to get biased with this uh, i have just listed out as an example so that is about uh, the commercial tools categories in general and an example of uh, commercial uh, embed system development and testing tools
Okay. So again, uh, every session, I think we will have all these words which we have gone through, or we will be using it. So this will be growing uh, all the time. Test harness, test bed, test bench, automatic test equipment, model-based testing, test tubs, test driver, faulty platform, MCDC, test hook, boot software or bootloader, input/output, ICD, interface control document, breakpoint, simulator, emulator, tracing. Profiling and data sheet, air data, I think circuit emulator. I think last time we stopped with this. Now today I have an equipment, or you can say test equipment, which will have the necessary necessary test environment items like test harness elements part of the test equipment. It also can have. Items such as oscilloscopes, logic analyzer, and any of the measuring equipment. Then, as I said, the core checker, core reviews, and all that, static analysis, dynamic analysis, X, raw file, editing, review, disassembly from the object file, then reverse engineering. So these are some of the embedded system modes. I think uh, the questions I have part one of this class. TM method question: How TM method is different than normal embedded system? And normal embedded system testing. Okay, we'll see you in the next class.